Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Mike Palaya. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Steel Nation Radio brought to you by Total Sports Enterprises. I'm Mike Palaya of SteelNationAssociation.com, where we cover the Steelers 24 7 while bringing you, the Steeler fans, together in an effort to raise money for Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Go to the site, read the articles, listen to the podcasts, join the club, and check out everything we have to offer and help us raise money for the kids at the same time. You can also find my work on SteelCityUnderground.com, along with many other talented columnists covering the Steelers all day every day. Uh, Read all the articles, listen to all the podcasts, and so much more on SteelCityUnderground.com. Well, let's get right into it. A lot going on this week, obviously. Uh, First and foremost, a great, fantastic win for the Steelers, beating down the Bengals to advance to 3-0 in the division, 5-2 overall. They are obviously the leaders of the AFC North, And if the playoffs were to start today, which they aren't, but if they were, they would be the number one seed in the AFC at 5-2. That being said, there are nine games to go. Far too early to talk about playoff seeding beyond what I just did right there. Um, But let's talk about a little bit about the Bengals game. And uh, obviously we have to get some things about Martavis Bryant. And then we'll get into this upcoming game in Detroit. Um... So first and foremost, I think the Bengals game went exactly how we all would have hoped. I think that Le'Veon Bell once again dominated. Um, He is just an unstoppable force. And now that he's going, I think he's going to continue to do so the rest of the way. Um, You feed him the ball, he's going to make a play. And how about, speaking of making plays, how about that stiff arm he put on Kirkpatrick when the passing game, it just slammed slammed Kirkpatrick to the ground. It was one of the best plays I've ever seen. Kirkpatrick bounced up so fast like he was a basketball. He hit the ground so hard, I think. But, you know, Bell is just a unique, one-of-a-kind athlete. Easily the best running back in football. One of the best we've probably ever seen. Um, Quite possibly the best since Barry Sanders, quite frankly. And You know, as we get further and further along, I'm starting to think that the Steelers just need to pay the man. Um, I mean, $17 million is quite a bit if that is what he wants on an annual basis. And I do believe in James Conner. And quite honestly, I'd like to see Conner get a few more carries to give Bell a little bit of rest some of these games. Um, But Conner is not Bell. Nobody is. And that's not fair to say that Conner is not compared to the fact that nobody is. I mean, you got to find a way to keep this guy for at least another four years beyond this. Now, obviously, you can franchise him for another season. He's not going to be happy with that. We're probably going to have to go through this whole holdout thing again next year. But if you guys can settle on 15 mil per, I mean, you might have to get that done. Anyway, I digress. The Steelers flat out manhandled. The Bengals. I don't think I was ever really worried about the game. Offensively, they did everything they needed to do with, of course, Bell. Roethlisberger was on target, um, making plays when needed, and was pretty accurate, in fact. And I, I was very pleased with the passing game along with the running attack. Defensively, I mean, they picked up a couple of turnovers, two picks on Andy Dalton, Joe Hayden, and William Gay. Uh, and quite frankly, when William Gay picked it off, I half expected him to take it to the house. I think he's got five or six in his career um, returned for a touchdown, and I want to say three or four of them are against the Bengals. But, you know, they just they made Dalton look like Dalton, and meaning, you know what, he's he's capable of making the big mistakes, especially in these big games, and he did it again. And it pushed the Bengals uh, to, I believe, two and four. And, you know, right now they're not in this conversation piece for the division. The Ravens fell to three and four. The Browns are 0-7. Oh they're done. Um, the Steelers control this division, and halfway through their division schedule undefeated, they are in a very, very good position. Um, next up is Detroit, and then after that, they're, after their eighth game here this week, they'll have the bye week. So they can go in 6-2, and two, no worse than 5-3. and three. you got to take that first half, and we'll get to that conversation in a minute. But first, 
Uh, we're going to talk about Martavis Bryant. And I did write about that earlier this week on SteelNationAssociation.com as well as SteelCityUnderground.com and other outlets. And, you know, it's it's ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous. You're all familiar with him being very upset after the game. He had one catch for three yards. He just wasn't part of the game plan. Apparently, he expected to be. Uh, in my podcast this time last week, I said that I thought he would be. Um, but he wasn't. And the Steelers won in a very important division game that really separated them from the rest of the AFC North. He cannot come out and pout, especially one week after denying which I knew were false, but denying the trade rumors. I knew his denials were false. I think everybody did, but everybody was willing to go um, past it and let it go. The Steelers, of course, said everything was fine. And they didn't happen. Bryant said everything was fine. He wanted to be in Pittsburgh. Nothing happened. And then to take to social media the night of a huge win and respond to some fan who was giving him grief, saying Juju Smith-Schuster was a better player than he was, calling the guy a fool, saying that he needed his... He wanted out if he didn't, you know, going to ESPN saying he's going to play out his contract if he can't get traded, but then he's not going to resign. I'm not tripping, or his exact words, I believe. You know, calling out a teammate specifically is ridiculous. Going on social media is ridiculous. Demanding a trade or expecting the ball more after being suspended for four games two years ago and an all-season last year due to drug-related issues The fact that he's still on this team, the fact that he's in the NFL right now, the man should be grateful. He absolutely has talent. He's got a ton of it, and he has a lot of opportunity to be a big part of this offense in the next nine weeks and then beyond, assuming they make the playoffs. They missed him last year in the playoffs, and they know that. Part of that is why they welcomed him back with open arms. Part of that is why they drafted Juju Smith-Schuster. Part of that's why they got rid of Sammy Coates, because he wasn't dependable. But you know what? It just hasn't happened yet. They said he's working hard. I'll buy that uh, in practice. You know, I, he's fast. I certainly saw him with my own eyes on the sidelines when I was at training camp. He, you know, and that was when he was just getting back into football shape, but he, he was looking pretty solid, but it just hasn't happened yet. He cannot go out there and cause this kind of distraction and drama in the middle of a one, a two game winning streak against both the Chiefs and the Bengals, which are big wins, this team is finally starting to move. Roethlisberger had his issues a few weeks ago in terms of interceptions. That's all sorted out. You know, Antonio Brown's not causing any issues at the moment in terms of demanding the ball. Why does Bryant need to do this now? It's it's ill advised. Mike Tomlin, you know, spoke about it at his press conference this week and mentioned, you know, how unfortunate it is, but they were you're gonna have a conversation and move on. Uh, Roethlisberger mentioned it and said, you know, they'll have a man-to-man talk about it and move on. Um, And so that's what they're going to do. But he can't continue to cause these issues. It's, It's not acceptable. It's not something that this team needs when they're going after uh, playoff appearance, Super Bowl, um, everything that they have, uh, you know, their aspirations set for. It can't happen. And, you know, if they deactivated him for a game or two, I would certainly support it. But what I wouldn't support is his demand to be traded. Um, You know, the deadline's coming up next Tuesday on Halloween. For my opinion, the NFL makes it too early in the season. Instead of after eight weeks, they should probably make it after 10 or 11. It is what it is, however. Um, They're not going to trade him. Mike Tomlin said as much. And they shouldn't. One, they learned from the LeGarrette Blunt incident a few years ago where he just pouted his way out of town, ended up on the Patriots, and won a couple of Super Bowls. Uh, two, he he's not worth anything right now. I mean, the guy only has 18 catches and 234 yards coming off a one-year drug suspension. What are you going to get for him right now? Nothing. You're going to get nothing. So, uh, no, they're not going to trade him, nor should they. If they really want to show him and the rest of these guys anything, they could deactivate him for a couple of games. I actually don't expect them to do that either. Um, And in fact, that's going to take me right into this Detroit game because there's actually some real use for him against this Detroit team this week. And it's possible that he could not explode due to anger about not getting the ball, but he could explode on the field in a big way. Um, The Lions are 3-3 and playing at home, coming off a bye, which is the second straight week that the Steelers are facing a team coming off a bye, which is a difficult situation, but I think they'll be okay there. 
Um, but they have the 22nd ranked pass defense and the 8th ranked rush defense. So I'm not saying Le'Veon Bell shouldn't get his touches. I'd still start the offense with Bell and I'd, you know, spread it out from there. And I think the Steelers will. But what I'm saying is two things. One, I think Bell will probably end up with less carries because the Lions have better potential to stop him. And two, I think that there makes more sense for the Steelers to utilize Roethlisberger's arm this week. Antonio Brown out on the one side and your good old boy Martavis Bryant on the other. Amongst some other guys. We don't know if Juju's going to play. He's in concussion protocol this week, so we'll have to see. But Eli Rogers in the slot uh, is certainly, you know, a replaceable option there. Um, you know, you've got Jesse James, of course, still. And then Bell in the passing game is always an opportunity for the Steelers to take advantage of. My point being, against a 22nd ranked pass defense, coming against a team that's playing at home after a one week uh, off, uh, the Steelers are probably going to utilize the pass game a little bit more this week. And this is the time to get Bryant involved. It's time. And I just have a feeling, and I did say this last week before all this, but I, I think that he's going to have a big game this week. I think is going to make it a point to get him the ball. Hopefully not to the point where it's very, very obvious on every play that he's doing it. But I see Bryant getting five or six catches this week, and usually his catches are for long yards. So this is the week. Um, yeah, I, I just I see it. I think that they have the opportunity to really take advantage of that and fix this situation all in one fell swoop going into the Steelers by a week the following week, hopefully 6-2, and two, which I'll get to in a little bit. Now, what they're going to have to watch out for uh, is Matt Stafford on offense. Now, he's leading a 30th-ranked offense in the league, but he's still dangerous. He's efficient with 12 touchdowns and four interceptions, and his favorite receiver, Golden Tate, is a bit of a threat with, uh, let's see, 36 targets. I'm sorry, 36 receptions. For 363 yards, uh, a couple of touchdowns, as long of 45. He's averaging about 10 yards per catch, but uh, he he's their playmaker. And Mike Tomlin said as much. And I think again, you'll see Artie Burns covering him wherever he goes. Burns, by the way, is is really stepping up week by week. He's turning into a very, very good turn uh, player on the corner. But they're gonna have to watch out for him. And then, you know, specifically on defense, I mentioned that they don't have a very solid defense, but where they are good is at creating the turnovers. They're number two in the league in uh, creating turnovers. And that's something, of course, the Steelers need to watch out for because if they provide the Lions with short fields through fumbles or interceptions by Roethlisberger or, you know, just mistakes, um, that could lend to a long night because Stafford, although they're the 30th ranked offense overall, is definitely capable of putting the ball in the end zone. And, you know, he's got a big arm. He's got a real big arm and he's a pretty accurate passer as well. So I think that they're going to have to uh, make sure that they take advantage of the secondary that the Lions are sporting. Get that ball to Brown, of course. Get that ball to Bryant as well. But avoid the turnovers because the Lions are definitely opportunistic in that area. So that's extremely important. Now, defensively, the Lions are sporting two guys with about, what, four sacks here. They've got Anthony Zettel and they've got Ezekiel Anas, Ansa, rather. Um, those guys to me are dangerous, and those are the guys that the offensive line certainly needs to keep away from Roethlisberger. Um, to here, Whitehead is their leading tackler with 28. And uh, he's another guy that can make some plays. So they definitely need to, you know, be aware of those guys. But overall, I don't feel like they're dealing with a very scary defense. I think the Steelers are obviously the favorite. And I think there's a good reason for that. I think they should go in. You start with the run, but you spread the ball out with the pass a little bit more this week. What I would like to see is you bring in James Conner for five to six or seven runs himself. Rest Bell a little bit. Connor is capable of five yard runs and 25 yard runs and anything in between. He's a power runner, but he's fast. I think he is a very good compliment to Le'Veon Bell. And I think this is the week to try him out to give Bell a little bit of rest as well as get him some rest because I think Roethlisberger is going to throw it a little bit more this week against a weaker secondary in Detroit. 
What I'd like to see is the Steelers continue this ravenous ball hawking that they did against the Bengals and pick up a couple of more interceptions. I'd like those sacks to continue to come. Uh, we'll see if Tua is able to go. You know, right now he's still iffy, but we'll see as we progress through the week. Uh, I don't think that they'll necessarily need him against Detroit, and I'd actually highly recommend that if he's not 100% that they sit him because I think the Steelers are going to win this game regardless if he plays or not. And then, of course, they have the bye the following week. So getting him a couple of weeks off will be a good idea. Same thing with Gilbert on the offensive line. Give him another week off. I don't think the Steelers are going to need him and then get him fresh after the bye week in a couple of weeks. Um, But I think, you know, the Steelers are going to come out slinging the ball. They're going to come out, of course, with Le'Veon Bell. They're going to be getting after Matt Stafford, and I think that's the best way to get after him is to really blitz him. Um, Not on every play. I certainly want him to drop back some, but if they can blitz him with Watt and Dupree, Cam Hayward, um, you know, James Harrison when he's in there, I think you can force Stafford into turnovers. He's improved over the years, but he's definitely capable of putting the ball in the hands of the opposing team. And the Steelers right now are taking advantage of uh, those opportunities the last week or two. And, um, you know, that that's one way to make it an easy game for yourself is obviously picking up the turnovers versus giving the turnovers. So I do expect them to do that. I look for TJ Watt to kind of reemerge. He started to do so against Cincinnati after I was um, wondering where he was a little bit. Uh, You know, he started to show up a little bit. I think Bud Dupree's poised to start really making splash plays again. And, um, you know, of course, Cam Hayward there on the line is amazing. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Artie Burns. I love Sean Davis as well back there. And Joe Hayden's starting to emerge. Mike Mitchell, I still could go either way on him. He's okay. He's a starting safety. He's a hard hitter. There's no doubt. But sometimes I don't think he's making the right plays. He's he's spotty. But you know what? We'll take him. We'll take him. They're getting it done right now. They have the number one pass defense. It's hard to blast them. But really, really impressed with Burns. Um, so that said, I guess it's about time for me to make my prediction I think the Steelers are going to go in there and win. I think uh, that's for sure. I keep giving them 30 points. They had 29 this past week. I'm putting them over 30 this week. That offense is starting to click. And I mean, with Bell running the ball the way he has, Roethlisberger after that Jacksonville game has been fine. I think he's going to explode this week, and so is Martavis Bryant. Brown, of course, going to get his balls. So I think that the Steelers win this thing 34 34- 17. I don't even think it's going to be a close one. I think they go in there and take this thing 34 to 17. They flex their muscle. They go into their bye week six and two. Uh, hopefully they get out of there with no injuries. The guys that are have a little banged up right now, you know, Gilbert and to and Juju, if he's still dealing with concussion symptoms, they get this week off, then they get the bye week off and they come out fresh for their ninth game of the season and head down the stretch the rest of the way and Hopefully they're playing for a first round buy and then some uh, beyond that. So Pittsburgh 34, Detroit 17. We will talk to you next week, hopefully, after another Steeler victory and a 6-2 and two record heading into the bye week. I'm Mike Palaya of SteelNationAssociation.com and SteelCityUnderground.com. Until next time, let's watch the Steelers and let's get another win. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.